another video. This is the last video in our getting started section. So we're going to be jumping into some, some coding and some building uh, of things in our next section, which is pretty exciting. But I didn't want to end this getting started section without talking about the developer program and what Apple offers. So here we're actually on the developer.apple.com website, which is the uh, kind of one-stop shop for all things Apple developer. So as you may know, you need to be a registered paid developer to publish things to the App Store and also to get access to certain things like creating uh, in-app purchases and creating push notifications and setting all that good stuff up. So the uh, program actually used to div be divided up uh, into uh, iOS and macOS and uh, basically be divided up um, by the platform. So if you wanted to develop for the iPhone and uh, let's say now we have iPad OS and Mac OS, that would be three different three different um, packages you would have to buy. Since then, uh, Apple's aggregated it and it's $99 a year uh, plus tax in your respective area. So uh, it's really not very expensive. Um, and in terms of recouping that investment, uh, which is kind of how I personally like to see it, um, you know, you, you spend the money and you want to reap the benefits of having access to it. Uh, it's really not a major task to recoup that investment. Uh, if anything, your, you know, your goal should be to really make uh, at least 20, 30, 40, if not much, much higher fold uh, of that um, investment you're putting in. So uh, without further ado, if we just go through this website, of course, um, it has a preview here of uh, Xcode and some of the new things that Apple developer um, has coming. So this uh, from iPad to Mac is basically a way where you can run iPad apps on uh, the Mac. And uh, they're really kind of showing off here uh, augmented reality and some of the newer things um, that they have in the works from an Apple perspective. Um, they, of course, here are working on Siri and the, they open that up to be integrated. And uh, here they have, of course, like a high highlight of all the platforms you can build for. So uh, Apple Developer is not only just for iOS. While we're going to be focusing on iOS, of course, you can build uh, for the Apple Watch, the TV, the computer, um, so on and so forth. So um, if we actually go to the Develop tab from up here, um, you know, it'll, it'll talk about the various things that are available, Swift UI, which we won't be covering yet um, as it's still in beta. Uh, of course, they talk about Xcode here, which we got a chance to look at in the prior videos. They talk about Swift, which we're going to be making use of throughout this entire Siri, uh, series. Um, and they also talk about using TestFlight here to test your applications. And uh, TestFlight is something that um, I didn't plan on actually covering, but seeing this now, um, I think I might toss this into the uh, at the end of this uh, series or closer to the end as we need to have an actual app uh, to distribute it to people to test, right? So whether it's internal, maybe we have a couple of friends and family we want to show it to, um, you know, companies and corporations like uh, Microsoft or Google, what they'll do is they'll use TestFlight to uh, distribute builds internally uh, to the company for testing uh, amongst employees. So basically that's an overview of the developer program. I think it's a very reasonable uh, amount of money that Apple charges for access to the App Store in terms of uh, them, you know, maintaining the app store and hosting it and all the good stuff that they do. Um, I would also mention that they do take a 30% cut of all of your gross sales, um, whether that is a paid app, a in-app purchase, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The one exception to that is if you have a recurring annual uh, subscription uh, that's auto renewing after you retain a customer, a paying customer for one year, after that, the percentile that Apple takes from that customer's uh, gross revenue that they bring in is 15%. So uh, that's a big reason that people like to uh, create services that bill on a recurring basis, uh, aside from the obvious benefits of a recurring income. Um, I actually will have a whole dedicated section on in-app purchases and how those various models work. But just to exemplify it, let's say you have a app that charges $100 a year um, and you have a thousand customers and you have them from the first year. The first year uh, of the 100,000 you make, Apple will take $30,000. Uh, from that year on, if you let's say retain all those customers and in our hypothetical world and you don't get any new customers, the next year from the 100,000, Apple will take 15,000. Um, and of course, all of this is pre-tax to the 
uh, country or municipality uh, that you live in. So uh, I'm here in the United States. And uh, of course, we get the us developers get the gross amount after Apple takes their cut and we are responsible for uh, taking care of taxes. So that's the Apple developer um, program and website at a glance. Again, it's developer.apple.com. I encourage you to come here and take a look. Um, if you, if and when you uh, create an account with Apple Developer, uh, it's important to know that they use your Apple ID actually as the same account. So uh, the Apple ID you use to log into the App Store to download apps or to buy music on iTunes, um, et cetera, et cetera, they use the same uh, account. You can also come here and actually watch uh, WWDC, which is the Worldwide Developers Conference. This is where Apple releases uh, a lot of their software and they show off a lot of things. So you can definitely come here and uh, click on this and it'll actually take you uh, to the videos that they have from this year's session, which was about uh, three, four-ish weeks ago. Um, and all the videos from WWDC 2019 so yeah, again, I encourage you to take a look at it. Other than that, this is the end of the getting started section. Um, if you have gone through this whole section, uh, it's been a little slow. And I think the reason I wanted to do that is so everyone has a strong and fundamental understanding of what they're kind of getting into with this course. Um, so they're not like 10 videos in and uh, you know they've felt like they've wasted their time. So uh, in the next video, we're gonna actually start designing a user interface. So get Xcode set up, get excited. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video.